And new at four, it's become a hot topic. Transgender athletes competing in school sports. And primarily we're talking here about teens born as boys competing against girls. Some say they have an unfair advantage. CBS 2's Brian Morin caught up with an Idaho lawmaker who wants to make it illegal. Yeah, whether it's baseball, softball, basketball, tennis, wrestling, the list goes on and on. Boys and girls have historically been separated based on biological sex. One Idaho lawmaker wants to make it state law. Idaho State Rep Barbara E. Hart has introduced a bill in the state house. She wants to put a stop to biological males from playing against biological females in sports. As, as we see the culture we're in right now, to have opportunities taken away from girls and women by boys and men, it's not right. It is absolutely not right. There are a number of stories out there of biological males who say they're transgender and are going up against biological girls and dominating. This bill would uh, ensure that girls and women are competing on a fair and level playing field against other girls and women and not boys and men. They have their opportunities to compete uh, and those will not be taken away. For Rep Ehard, the root of her bill goes back to her experience with Title IX. She played D1 basketball for ISU and coached D1 women's basketball for 15 years. She believes transgender females are ruining it for biological girls. Title IX was all about providing opportunities to girls and women. We all know that. We don't have to um, conflate and misconstrue the words in Title IX to know what it was about. I lived it. It was about providing opportunities for us, just like boys and men had those same opportunities. Rep Ehart is wearing a Nike pin, and she'll keep it on until her bill passes. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, keep it there to remind people that this bill is important. A pair of BLM firefighters from Idaho have just returned from the front lines of those fires in Australia. Heather Ann Wagner from Idaho Falls tells us how they came to the rescue. The call for help from Down Under came out late last year as flames devastated the country. Battalion Chief Chris Brainton on the right and Engine Captain Farron Kunkel heard the cry for help. How we ended up down there, uh, the, the initial request uh, for interested uh, fire support, fire suppression and, uh, personnel came through. Uh, I believe we started to see the request about uh, November. Both hit the lines in Victoria in early January after only a few days of training to get adjusted to the area and recently returned home. They say a typical day there is pretty much like here. Uh, you know, for, for the, uh, the base camp where we were out of in Swiss Creek, uh, just like in the States, it's, you start with the morning. Well, you start with breakfast. Uh, that's usually a good, good thing to begin with. Uh, but then you have briefing. Uh, it's an operational briefing, uh, covers on, you know, what resources go and where, who's, who's working for whom, uh, you know, weather conditions, uh, what resources are available, uh, what can we expect for the day. It was the diversity of the landscape in just the southeast Australia itself. There was like five or ten different climates, microclimates, and we saw a uh, picture of the way they layered the different climates, and you had like Brazil on the east side, southeast, east of Melbourne, you had Northern Africa, Safari on one, and then you had like uh, the Gavi Desert. In the northwest, just, just lots of different climates, temperature changes depending on elevation. One thing both say is it was the biggest opportunity of their career. They were honored to represent the United States and Idaho. Reporting in Idaho Falls, I'm Heather Ann Wagner. The U.S. has a mutual aid agreement with Australia and New Zealand. The BLM expects to send more help in the near future. Well, while Boise looks for a new top cop, the interim police chief is doing more than just keeping a seat warm. CBS 2's Trevor Fay joins us live from City Hall West with a conversation with Chief Mike Masterson on what the police department is doing right now to make the city safer. Chief Mike Masterson tells me that there is much to do before the city decides who will be the next police chief. Although he does tell me that his officers are looking forward to finding out who their new boss is going to be. First, he says the pool of candidates for police chief will be narrowed to a final pool of three or four. Candidates have interviewed with a search firm. 
that they are possibly narrowing that list down to eight to ten individuals whose names and bios and resumes will be submitted to the mayor. Boise PD is also in the market for new officers. They need a couple dozen just to replace people who have left. We'll be hiring about 15 people in, in the next uh, two classes this year and probably in 2021 as well. Masterson is focusing on a new traffic safety plan that started a few weeks ago. Its aim to educate and regulate drivers on the road. One of the ways to improve your safety and the safety of those around you is to pull over into a parking lot like where I am now if you want to use your phone to send a text message or make a call. Liaison officers are stepping in to help the department with investigations. Their job is to be the trusted go-to source for ethnic communities to share information with police. Is the idea to have these liaisons be of the same race that they are assigned to or just have a deeper understanding? Nope, not, absolutely not. We have some volunteers uh, that want to be these liaisons. They don't have to be necessarily the race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. They just want to do the job. And, uh, and do it well. Masterson calls these officers many police chiefs because of the help they provide the department and the community. He's overseeing all of these initiatives while the new police chief is